some people locally have asked us how our hay cutting is going and not all of our local neighbors know that we do YouTube or aren't driving right by us and we have family that's not close by us. These YouTube videos kind of keep everybody in the loop of what's going on if you don't see somebody regularly. So this is what's going on. We started out cutting just sections and doing this as mini fields and it works out really well that way so that it doesn't get to be a great big circle, circle, circle. And you know, it's quite large. I think total in hay, we might have about 80 acres right now. So, so far he said we've gotten 62 round bales off of the east, the far east, and the small south field. So this is our north field. And today, uh, I suppose this one got tatted yesterday morning. This section got cut yesterday and it's only supposed to be about 77 today and there is a nice breeze so this is gonna lay out and get nice and dry and while that's drying we've moved on to another job we got six loads of gravel brought in we're constantly continuing to have gravel um, we're gonna hang on to some of it for future projects such as you know like a, a barn floor sort of situation but the maple syruping in the woods works out so much better with a gravel uh, path to be on instead of getting stuck in the mud with a loaded tank of sap because at eight pounds a gallon, that starts adding up really fast. So this is where it was delivered to. They're gonna use the backhoe to load it onto the auto car. There's been videos in the past of the auto car, but people always like these old. It's um an auto car constructor dump truck and George is gonna help out his dad today they just did a pull start on that with the backhoe and they're letting it get aired up right now so here comes dad he's running the Ford this is a 755 B it's a really large backhoe and you know for years we didn't have it running he's moving some hay bales first to get started to clear his driveway to where he's gonna put it but it works out really well having that to do all of our heavy lifting around this place so if you have a good long chain you can see he picks up one with the back you can pick up two with the front bucket and it works out really well. Good to have a teenage boy to help out around a farm. And this is why farm kids grow up being able to pick and choose what they want to do for work. Learning a little bit at a time and having confidence at a young age. So all these piles are going to get loaded up here and moved. It'll be a big day today. This family's got plenty to do. George is going to help his dad a bit. He's up there riding in the truck. He's five. And they're going to be switching between the backhoe and the truck to get this all put up where it needs to be.
Well, things around here are going good for us. You have to make your good and not just hope for the best or to be blessed. You have to take action and make things happen. We hear so often from our friends that they are just amazed at the things we can do. We don't sit around watching cable TV. <laughs> it's just not existent at this place. We watch a little bit of YouTube here and there. Spare time? What's that? <laughs> Spare time is sleeping time. So the gravel is all hauled away. It always just naturally leaves a fresh layer here, so that's good. Uh, a little touch up on the driveway there. This is how a lot of the work days begin here. Everyone kind of comes out to talk to dad. He tells them all what's going on, why he's doing it, how he's doing it. And if you didn't see the video last year, you can go back and check, but I just wanted to show you real quick his tandem hay rake uh, hitch that he made. And he fabricated this from an old farm implement. He took the tongue off of that. This is an old basketball hoop and a old Chevy rear axle that he was able to put on the ends and he was able to just weld that together. It was a project that took, you know, a day to fabricate and draw out, weld, another day to, you know, prime and paint. But when you're doing a large amount of acres, doing this tandem works really well in speeding it up. He did fine the other day doing the other section. This section is a bit bigger. Trey wants them to lower this one a little bit more so that they're even. He's a good farm helper. He's got a good eye. He has the best understanding of all the children of the farming and the implements. So this is what he's got to hay rake today. We're going to get on with this. And I think this is plenty of footage for a video. So I'll just get a little shot of him doing his tandem raking and we'll see you all at the next video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the thumbs up, share it, like it, subscribe. All that stuff helps in the visibility so that you keep seeing our videos. Commenting helps make sure that it pops up in your feed in the future and that our videos are recommended to you. So one of the things that he wants to still do, he hadn't um, thought of it last year, but you know, sometimes plans change as you progress. He wants to do a fold up or fold down standard. So Trey noticed that when this was just setting on the ground and the hay rake was hooked up, it was putting tension on this pin. So they're gonna do the fold down standard here so that it's got its own uh, portable hitch for parking. And right now this is set up for single rows because first cutting is your biggest, tallest, thickest, heaviest cutting unless you've missed a cutting. So in that case, um, when there's less hay, which I would imagine our second cutting is going to be uh, quite a bit less because of the moisture that we've had. Um, I think I just read online that it's been six weeks since we've had rain. So I don't know if that was accurate for our area or not, but I'll, I'll look into it. Um, 
the uh, second rake, well, the first rake, he wants to take another um, like rectangle stock metal tubing and this hay rake will now go back further and it'll get set up so that you can combine the rows. So this hay rake here, we'll pick it up, move it over to this one when it's sitting back there and move it over to the end. So basically you're just creating length here to be able to pull that further back. So I'm going to try to get you over there so you can see how big those uh, rows are on the other side. He's bailing. He's moving awful fast. He's found that he didn't like the back hole for picking up the bales right now because it is already getting so dry so fast that he's bailing it. And when the baler has made its round after he's tied it off, he's bringing it over across the field and just unloading it straight from the baler here in this shaded section of the yard to keep some less heavy traffic off of the field. However, the backhoe does allow them to pick up three at a time, so there's the benefit of that also. So if you saw in the last video, we got that new gearbox mounted on the string trimmer. We always go around, we're starting trees in the hay field so this can be cattle pasture at some point and we have a couple utility poles out by the road so we always clean this up so that it's not left like that and then the tree does better until the grass in the hay field gets tall we bring buckets out to water the trees because honestly we've had trees that are three years old um, since they've been planted plus the years at the nursery die when it's so hot if they can't get to the moisture so the trees have been a little bit stressed so that's my job and here's just a new appearance on the farm Trey just picked this up today for $50 on Facebook marketplace a Schwinn Cruiser 7 uh, we've had videos about the Cruiser 7s in the past but this one I'll have to look up the date code 2240 and this one was a campground bike, so it's in the roughest condition of all the bikes we own. But they just don't make them anymore. So we're going to look into some parts for them. Uh, some of the parts were a little different on this bike. So that's been beat up from being on a bike rack. And this whole Shimano 34, it says Mega Range, is different. Um, and it's got a plastic sprocket here. So a little bit of seat collateral damage from falling over probably and a different shifter than the other one well i think it's different from the other one isn't it no, it's, it's different from the cruiser four yeah, it's the so same the yep but if you were to flip this over the serial number is here under the sprocket so it's still a genuine schwinn before the sellout to the china market so they got some work to do on it to clean it up this has been not tight so it's been rubbing here and you know like that but it's a pretty decent bike we've got an extra set of fenders for it so that was no big deal trey wanted to make sure and share with you our code here the serial number so it starts with a looks like tm so you should always write that down and keep track of that in case you ever have a bike theft good to have around and a lot of maintenance he's already done on this bike today the back room needed some straightening out his kickstand needs worked on like the other one the chain was totally dry, metal to metal. So he's just kind of working it out, lubricating it. Have you adjusted the brakes yet? A little bit. Yeah. yeah. Adjustments. Uh, one thing I did notice about this bike from the others is it's got painted handlebars instead of chromed. And the bike post is painted black instead of chromed. So it's a work bike. This one is great for the farm because it's not... Um, the shiny metallic green and it can be treated as a work bike. It's like with my husband's old trucks There's daily drivers and then there's collector trucks. So this is a daily rider and you don't have to worry about it so much um, And that's the difference too. our other bikes. They either bought new or bought secondhand This guy said his father-in-law bought it used and gave it to him So he could have been the third fourth fifth owner. It's, it's hard to say but I was gonna say that 2240 Ah, uh, 224th day of zero. 
So that was the last year for that one. So here is this far north side. Let's go over and go check out these massive windrows. The way he had it set up with the single raking, they're quite big. So off he goes with another round bale to take it up to the homestead. It's gonna cross the field and go that way. We're having some unusually cool weather today. It said like 74 was gonna be our high today. And it has been nice, but cloudy. And this is the sunniest it's been all day. Now, I know it was after six, probably 6.30, quarter to seven at this point. You lose track of the day so quickly on a farm going from job to job. So I know it was six when I went out to feed the animals. So they've all got their food and water. Look at how tall this is. Just nice. So this will sit here. I can feel a bit of moisture in it. Not too much. If you end up leaving it sit for another day, then you start losing um, some of your leaves. Like in the alfalfa, that, that's pretty good. It's just that, you know, those stems, they retain a bit of moisture. But it's very nice overall. A little bit of weed. I always pull, try to pull those out whenever I can. It's a pretty weedless field overall. That's always nice. And with first cutting, you don't have any of those noxious weeds that happen late in the season with third cutting. I was joking with my husband, the effort that we put into this. Some people driving by are probably thinking, what are they doing out there with a weed whacker in their field? Why did they plant a tree there in the first place? It's all part of the long-term plan. It's kind of like my long-term plan with these trees. These were all three and seven dollar trees that I planted. We have Meyer grocery stores in Michigan and they had clearanced them out in the summer because they were tired of watering them. Well, that's not the case with what's going on out in the field. We're paying nice full prices for those trees. So we just try to buy a couple every year, um, enough that we can take buckets of water out. And this is why. So when we made this our cattle pasture right there, we have a scratching post. If we were to try to put a baby tree out here, they'd be rubbing and itching and scratching on it and it would never um, survive like T posts or fencing. If we get those trees established out in the fields now, like way out there, there's a walnut tree, there's one other over in that field. Most of the trees here through the fields have been removed. They make great pasture, uh, shade, shelter for all of these animals that are out on pasture. These animals have only had this pasture here. Um, they've had uh, in the past access to the barns and it works out really good. We want to be able to give them their own just a small run in out here for the winter a windbreak and whatnot and to kind of change the layout of the fencing and add more pasture. Maybe at some point way down the line the kids might want to do more animals. They might want to have homes by the trees. So that's what I mean by part of the long-term plan. I don't think anybody ever have showed up at a farm that was just there and said, oh, what a beautiful place. Um, we want to do it for our own enjoyment and it's always nice to hear that, oh yeah, I know that place, it looks nice. Or when people come here, oh, I love it here, it's so beautiful, I want this kind of life. And you know, everyone always talks about doing their best life. We're always trying to improve on it. So we're going to keep working on our hay, we're going to keep working on our pastures, we're going to keep working on our cattle. We're going to just work on everything every day as it comes up. That's the nice thing about farming, you kind of get to pick and choose what you're going to work on. Sometimes it's a hustle to get something done before a rain or, you know, an animal surprises you with a baby sooner, things like that. So it's always interesting to see what's going to unfold on the channel. Hit that subscribe button and you'll get to see what happens next time. Thanks for watching everybody. Bye-bye.